who are here. I've got apologies from the Mayor, who's in Brisbane, Councillor Cooper and Councillor Fletcher. And then I've got apologies for lateness from um, Councillor Lee and Chepus and Taipiri, and I think Councillor Sir John. So I'm happy to move those, if someone would second, second that. Thank you, Leanne. All those in favour, please say aye. aye. Against, carried. Um, just checking if anyone's got any declarations of interest. Oh, just let us know if anything comes up and I'll move the minutes of the 10th of June. Someone second, would like to second. second those. Councillor Wood. I'll put that all those in favour, please say aye. Aye. Against, carried. Thank you for that. There are no petitions and no um, public input declined, um, but we do have some public input approved and we've got um, Gavin Gunston on behalf of the Hobsonville Community <coughs> Trust and Hobsonville Point residents first, and then we've got Penny Bright after mm. that. We've got Lisa White then from the local board, but I think it's good for Lisa to actually speak at the item. So, Gavin, well, welcome. So you've got... Um, now, there was a letter sent. Hopefully everyone's got a copy or has had a chance to read it. Is there anyone who'd like a copy to be looking at? If you do, we've got some here. So, right, we're in your hands, Gavin. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, committee members, for uh, the opportunity for the Hobsonville Point Resident Society uh, to present its position to the Auckland Council today on the future use and the development of the council-owned 20 hectares at Hobsonville Point. The Hobsonville Point Resident Society uh, wishes to make clear that we support the 14-6 master plan that has been tabled by <laughs> ACPL today. Our support, however, as residents is on the basis that the community needs that we've been presenting as a Hobsville Point community to the Upper Harbour Board on 26th of May, that they are incorporated into the design of what has been referred to as an employment hub, local centre and mixed use zone. <coughs> we see quite significant advantages arising from the 14-6 master plan and uh, these would include for us certainty as to the completion of the project for us as a community. Uh, we see the master plan as providing the opportunity to incorporate the remaining uh, key community needs that are still outstanding um, or that have not yet been planned for. Uh, these include, for us as a community, the, indoor, the need for indoor youth and recreational facility, the need for hobby workshop type space due to the type of community and housing within which we live, the need for places of worship, and the need for resident gathering, hangout, eating, an event, local event type space to be provided for in our community. We also see significant advantages in providing the opportunity to maximise the use of existing infrastructure, <coughs> that is the WASP hangar, and what was formerly known as the Sovereign hangar, or now as the YDL. Uh, we see those two buildings particularly as providing significant community benefit if used in a positive manner, and potentially meeting some of those needs that I just identified. We also see the 14-6 master plan as providing positive local employment opportunities for residents and for those that live within walking distance uh, or within the immediate vicinity of our community. We see that this 14-6 master plan provides the opportunity for further additional residential housing. We all know the need uh, for that uh, across Auckland. We also believe that this 14-6 master plan is in line with the current community design the road layout and the traffic flow. And along these lines of key interest to us as a community is that, is that this 146 master plan provides a real potential community and neighbourhood centre, hub and focal point, which is a key, key need for us in our community today. On the other hand, the disadvantages of the film studio campus alternative option that you have before you, as we see them, would be for one, the uncertainty of this proposal reaching completion and reaching its targets. Two, the uh, potential delayed completion if this was to go ahead. Also, the significant and substantial increase in traffic flow that we see has been referred to. This traffic flow would pass predominantly past our two schools, a primary school and a secondary school. And, would, and in our resident view would far exceed um, the allowance that is provided for on the current roading network and that has recently just been built. 
Along these lines, we are concerned that the proposed traffic flow would also in indicate that the employment opportunities are not local. This also raises further uh, concerns around parking, which is a massive issue for us at Hobsonville Point. It is designed as a walking community, so we need the employment to be local, and it's already quite congested and is strained locale. Finally, we have concerns of how the film studio campus and its uh, proposed layout would actually fragment the community and the proposal of a neighbourhood centre. So I'd just like to ask on behalf of the Hobsville Point community and specifically on behalf also of the Hobsville Point Resident Society today that we would also be able to be involved in the planning and development of this neighbourhood employment zone if it does go ahead so that we can ensure that we maximise for the council the benefit and the effective use of this land. So on behalf of the Hobsville Point Resident Society, thank you for your time to share today and we would invite if you have any questions um, both now or in the future. Thanks, Gavin. I'm sure there will be a couple of questions. Um, Councillor Watson. Thanks, Gavin. Um, I, I take it from your presentation today that, that your primary concern is to do with the provision of adequate community facilities in an area that uh, is obviously in very short supply. As far as the options that are up uh, before us today, <coughs> um, if, if one option is, is, is more willing to to go to some way to providing that sort of community facilities, does that change your thinking? Because basically at where we stand at the moment is that um, as far as community facilities go, we've been told that it just has to go through the normal council processes as opposed to a, you know, a deal, an opportunistic deal being struck. Does that change your view? I think when we've been looking through the plans, we, we would struggle to see how it can be accommodated in the, in the proposed uh, layout for that film campus. Um, and we certainly see, as I mentioned before, just the, the existing infrastructure. If that's going to be used in other ways, then that doesn't provide the opportunity. Um, I think the Upper Harbour Board recently did a feasibility study on the um, potential use of an indoor um, of the YDL building as being used as an indoor facility, recreational facility. And when we looked at the cost <coughs> of trying to build something like that for our community, which is going to have a rather large population, um, it, it, I don't think that would be feasible for any community group or council if you're building that from scratch. It would be very tough. Um, so I think that is a primary concern for us, but also so too is things <coughs> such as that traffic issue, the parking issue, um, and local employment. Our community is designed as a walking community. Um, if we can't walk, if, if everyone's coming from outside and therefore our people are also having to head off-site, that's a huge concern for us. Um, but yes, certainly primary concern is around that community need um, there's some key areas there that we're still working very closely with the Hobsonville Land Company as well as Auckland Council, Upper Harbour Board to try and find some solutions. Um, but yeah, we need to find a way forward. And I think too this adds, you know, the 14.6 or the 1010, 20 hectares of housing, any of it is adding further housing as well into our community. So we have further community need and then there's Scott Point right next door which is adding further significant demand. Any other questions for Gavin? Um, Councillor Walker. Yeah, um, just a question about um, community facilities and especially reserves. We've got a situation in that overall Hobsonville area where there's a limited amount of land for reserve. If you've got significantly more housing, there's going to be more pressure on reserve land, any community facilities and so on. Um, so that's that's one question. Uh, the other question I've got is just around employment. Um, my understanding from looking through the figures is that the um, film studio proposition employs <coughs> a lot of people and makes available jobs across a whole range of um, skills, um, incomes and, and the like that I would have thought would have been um, pretty attractive to uh, people living in um, the Hobsonville area because it's an attractive um, sub subdivision and if you had great jobs there, um, I would have thought that would have been a real plus. Mm -hmm. So a couple of questions there, one around the relationship between a lot of, a lot more people and limited um, community facilities and then around employment and maybe really good employment. 
So I'll talk. Uh, so first to the employment is. Um, so our concern was when we saw the numbers. Um, I don't have them right in front of me, but I think in your report um, it said around about 700 cars, six to 700 cars per peak hour, um, coming in and out of our community. That's that was a real concern that would, to us, indicate. Um, I'm guessing they're not all courier drivers, um, so that would indicate to us as a, as a resident society when we looked at that that, that they must be coming from outside to work um, and are also leaving. Um, so if we're having 700 an hour or 6 to 700 an hour, that's, that's quite concerning for us. Um, is, so we certainly would appreciate employment. Um, the, the concept of Hobbsville Point, the vision that we have seen that we have bought into as a community is that there is local employment. Uh, we see in conversations that we have had with the council um, and with the um, uh, with the Hobsville Land Company is that we're encouraged that there is local employment being provided by this and we believe that it's more likely that that employment will be local under the 14-6. Um, on, the, on the lines of um, the increasing population, yes, we do have concerns um, as we have from the beginning and we've been working through with the council, with the Hobsville Land Company, <coughs> looking at... Um, the community infrastructure that was provided for and the needs that were identified that aren't still being met. Um, in terms of the overall numbers, um, I think Scott Point um, and, and it's how it links directly into our community so directly, um, that's too massive between Hobsville Point, what was originally proposed, the 2,500 homes, similar sorts of numbers being talked about at Scott Point. That would suggest... Um, yeah, that's already a huge number for us to deal with. There is a shortage. Um, will more community facilities, however, be provided through that film studio campus? When we've looked at the option, we believe the answer is no, and we believe that there is more likely potential of being able to create some further, particularly indoor type uh, facilities along those needs that I talked about, are more likely under the 14-6 option. Um, so we believe, yeah, that's why our support for, for any option is based on the real need to meet that community need, but also wanting to see employment local. Does that answer? Yep, sure. Yeah. Okay. okay. Scott, yep, just hang on a sec. I've got um, Councillor Clough and then Councillor <coughs> Wood. Peter, um, it's, it's been long designated that a marine industry was going to go in there. Do you think most people who actually bought at Hobsonville were aware that there was going to be a marine industry there when they bought there? Yes. They did know that? Yeah, I, I think on the whole, I can't speak for every person, and I think what we've also noticed is that new residents coming in potentially have different understandings. They've read different things in the last year or two. Um, but as an early resident, yes, we, w we were well aware of the marine industry precinct. I think there was, there is a desire among a number of residents still to have seen the use of the port if, if it could have worked. I think what we're also realising, though, um, from... You know, I'm not an expert in this area, but from what has been reported back by council is that the type of marine industry that was proposed, the super yacht building, um, seems unlikely and it seems that you haven't been able to find that demand. So if it can't be met in that way, what is the other best alternative? Um, and, and I think that's what we're looking before us is there's two alternatives presented, which one b best yep. could meet the needs <coughs> of the community. Yeah, thank you. Uh, yep. Councillor Wood. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Gavin. Um, just in relation to uh, community uh, needs, uh, can you just comment on the area down on the foreshore, the Sunderland mm -hmm. hangar, the old Sunderland hangar, and the other, the other marine section kind of areas that are historic? Are they suitable for um, community needs? I think there's a number there that are suitable or could be adapted to be suitable. Um, however, um, we... It's been indicated to us that it's very expensive land, um, that waterfront. Um, and so, yeah, is it likely that community would have access to be able to develop those facilities to meet some of the wider needs that aren't being met? I'm not sure. Uh, seems quite unlikely to us. Um, the, the WASP hangar, the YDL um, hangar would appear to be more likely. Um, we met last year. We um, developed a community consultation. Um, which um, local council had said was one of the best attended, uh, most involved community consultations they'd ever seen. And there was a real desire there to create a community hub. Um, the, 
best place for that appeared to be around the Sunderland Lounge headquarters building. There's two council-owned facilities there coming on board um, shortly, and we believe that if we could maximise that area, and across the road is the 20 hectares that we're talking about today, that really made sense as a zone, and then that would link really well into what Hobsable Land Company is proposing and exploring for the waterfront, um, bearing in mind that, yeah, that is going to be prime land, I think.